And Nikki Chevenel joining us for her Tuesday hit. The uh, managing editor, reporter, do everything at Rivals.com, covering all things Arkansas athletics, hogbeat.com. Nikki, what's going on today? How are you? I'm good. Just, uh, you know, keeping organized, all these uh, recruiting guys. I'm updating the big board. You know how it goes. <laughs> I know. And I'm sure that very soon you're just going to have you, the big board's going to be a bunch of, of official visits that are coming down in June. I know we talked about that recently. And um, Anthony Brown is the re- most recent uh, official visit uh, for Arkansas out of Tennessee. I saw you wrote about him earlier today. Yeah, so he's actually a Michigan native who moved to Tennessee. So another Michigan guy, you know, they have Miles Rouser committed the four-star safety. Um, but Arkansas hasn't landed a, a kid from Tennessee uh, since um, Sam Pittman got here. So that would be very big. He's a, a corner. He's listed as an athlete because he does play on offense for uh, Milan High School. Um, but, yeah, they've been recruiting him since January. He's a three-star, uh, but a top 25 player in the state of Tennessee. Um, and it's the first official visit he's scheduled, so not really sure who else is up there for him. He's not hes not really close to a decision. He's going to cut a top 10 uh, in May. But recruiting is just as much about transfers as it is about about high school kids now, and that's so obvious, you know, in the, in the way that teams are being built. And so... You know, now now a couple of transfers coming in uh, to uh, help out on the defensive line. Um, and it looks like I saw Mike Farrell wrote some really good things about John Ridgway, who picked Arkansas uh, over Texas and a few other uh, Power 5 schools. This is a kid out of Illinois State that was, what, a two-star when he got there but was really productive for the Cardinals. Yeah, uh, he used to be an offensive lineman, switched to defensive line, so he's still, like, relatively – you know, early in his career on the defensive line, which I think is a big reason why you take him. Uh, he looked very dominant at the FCS level. Um, and at 6'6", 325 pounds, uh, you know, definitely uh, that would describe why there was so much interest in him. Um, and in just four games, he was able to have, you know, 22 tackles from the nose tackle position. So, uh, really impressive, and yeah, I was surprised that Mike Farrell had him uh, ranked so high. He he thinks he's the second best uh, defensive lineman taken out of the portal uh, behind Big Cat Bryant. So that's uh, that's high praise. Wow, wow, yeah, and I mean, he's saying he could be an impact player right away. And I feel is that how you feel about Jalen Williams too? I know he's a defensive lineman um, out of uh, out of Jones College. One of the better JUCO gets, apparently, out of the transfer portal on that side as well. So, I mean, it's not a totally rebuilt defensive line, but you do have some guys who are coming in that were really productive at, at lower levels. You just kind of wonder if that if that jump to the SEC is a little too big for them, right? Yeah, I think you do typically see, you know, a, it does take a little while. You saw it with Dorian Gerald. He um, wasn't as good the first year he was here, and then he started – uh, to play really well before uh, the weird um, embolism thing that he had. Um, but even, you know, Marco Utzi, the guy from um, Parkview that's transferring him from Missouri, I mean, he has more SEC snaps than any defensive lineman on the roster. So they're, those are three guys that can definitely contribute. Jalen Williams is a little banged up during the spring, so we didn't get to see a ton of him. Uh, but they're they're looking for, you know, higher competition levels in that gr- group and just more size overall. Um, Enoch Jackson, who transferred away, he was, you know, six foot. So a, a smaller defensive tackle that I thought could maybe in the right scheme get some play, but just wasn't working out for him. Nikki Chavanel from hogbeat.com joining us here on halftime. Nick, let's talk about the NFL draft coming up later this week. I think it's pretty safe to say that there's not going to be any Razorbacks drafted in day one with the first round. You might maybe see one sneak into rounds two or three, but for right now, let's focus on Felipe Franks. I've seen him as pretty well between like five and seven. What are you hearing about the draft status and where Felipe Franks could end up in the NFL draft? Unfortunately, I don't think teams are, you know, super high on him or, or very willing to, uh, draft him high. He's definitely seen as, you know, a backup uh, competitor. So that's someone you take in the seventh round or with your 
with your uh, free agency. Um, I've seen him even projected as may, maybe being Mr. Irrelevant, which is you now the last pick in the draft. I think that's where uh, the athletic has him. Uh, but he'll, you know, he'll be a very serviceable backup in the NFL, I think. Uh, but I don't think teams like his uh, decision making um, and like how fast he can process uh, what the defense is showing on his receivers. It almost sounds like to me when you bring up decision making, different things like that, that they're kind of, is it fair to say like they're basing it more off his time at Florida? Because Nick, I mean, he was one of the most, if not, or he is the most accurate thrower in race back history. I mean, his, I mean, yes, you did see some different um, problems with his decision making from time to time, but he's still a supremely accurate thrower. So <clears throat> it seems to me like they're almost basing this off of his time at Florida rather than an incredible year that he had at Arkansas. That, that could be part of it as well. But when you look at how many sacks he took versus, you know, throwing the ball away or, or moving on to another um, target out there in the field, uh, I think that teams don't like that. They think he, you know, hesitates too long and that results in, you know, loss of yardage, despite when he does make the throw being quite accurate this past season. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how he develops, but I think that, you know, he he definitely played his way into getting drafted with his year of play at Arkansas. I don't think that would have happened if he had stayed at Florida, obviously. Mm. A couple more guys I want to touch on before we throw it back over to Phil. Rakeem Boyd, we haven't, for a guy that like two years ago was like potentially maybe a second, third round pick, just an extremely high upside to now, Nikki, not even really being mentioned to be drafted at all. So I mean, what do you think? Do you think he'll have his name called at all during this draft or it, 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 is the is the injuries that he suffered this season and past injuries just too much for him to overcome to get drafted? Yeah, I mean, I don't think teams like uh, that he opted out, first of all. Um, he was having a worse season uh, than he has had at the collegiate level, um, and it it's a question of durability. Uh, you know, NFL running backs, their careers are short as it is, and so him already – um, showing signs of, you know, durability issues is is not going to have him very high. I think he's ranked like 20 or, or higher in, um, you know, running backs in this class. I mean, yeah, I think he would have had better luck um, last year, but, you know, hindsight. <laughs> exactly. Last guy I want to touch on, Jonathan Marshall had an incredible uh, last season here with the Razorbacks and played really well, has done really well in the combine of the different pro days that they've had in Fayetteville. Phil has him going in the fifth round. I think he might slip into the fourth round. Do you think he might slip into that day to the NFL draft? He seems like a surefire guy, though, to be drafted one way or another. His his combine was so impressive, or not the actual combine, but his pro day was so impressive that I do think that he could potentially move up into the fourth. I think it, as people have, um, you know, dove more into past the three rounds of the draft that they've seen him and are liking him more. I've seen him move up since the season on people's draft boards. Um, yeah, there's really just a, a lot to like about him. Uh, incredible athleticism, strength, uh, and the his ability this past season to play almost every single snap. I mean, teams should love that. So, Nikki, what's um, – now it's, spring game's done. Spring ball's over. We've had some announcements of players transferring out, players transferring in. Is that what we are to expect for the next few weeks? You, you think the transfer is done for Arkansas, in or out? Well, I know that they're still looking for an edge guy on the defensive line. I'm not sure if there's one that they love in there right now or, if, you know, they might hold off. Um, I think the NCAA did set a deadline um, in July for, you know, telling your former program that you're going to enter the transfer portal so we could see that dragged out into the summer even uh but yeah and then you know you have the basketball trend so one spot open and like you know daily there's there's rumors of who that one spot could go to uh but nothing you know super concrete at this point i know that musk was down in florida for vacation and that, that was basically staff meetings in a, in a different venue. I know that they were still working hard on recruiting while they were there. So yeah, that's, that's what we're watching. We could, we could still expect another pickup 
whether that be a tight end or maybe a wide receiver or a defensive end for the football team. And then, yeah, who knows with the basketball team. I think they're yeah. just trying to get the, the best players that they can get while also, you know, understanding that there's only so many minutes to go around. That's right. And really for both sports, it's like I saw Mel Tucker, the head coach of Michigan State, said they have a person whose job is basically just to sit there at a computer. The computer is always on the transfer portal. And that person's job is to hit the refresh button every 30 minutes. Sounds like a cush job, but also sounds like one that's pretty important. I would assume every team has one of those right now. Yeah. I mean, the faster you can get in contact, uh, the better, because that tends to matter. I mean, I didn't think it would have an effect on John because all of his offers came in like one after the other. But it definitely seems like being the first one to take a chance on him. Uh, an FCS-level guy that made a big difference. Nikki, you're the best. We'll leave it there. Appreciate you. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. You got it. That's Nikki Chavanel joining us every Tuesday from hogbeat.com, part of the Rivals Network. Definitely worth your subscription. It's also worth the night out at B-Dubs if you haven't had any good wings recently, right? Need some great wings, but also if you're in the need for a job, if you're needing to get, if, you, if you've if you been recently unemployed or anything like that, Buffalo Wild Wings right now, these guys are hiring. You can learn more about B-Dubs and why it's a great place to work, and you can apply online at work, the number four wings. Dot com. That's work4wings.com. Apply right now. B-Dubs is offering competitive pay, team member discounts, flexible schedule, insurance options, incentive, and much, much more. Work every day where it is game day only at Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar!